Hi, I'm Ross Rathui, and welcome back to a new episode of Ask This Old House. Today, I'm headed to a homeowner's house who wrote in about preventing ice dams. Now, ice dams happen in a lot of cold climates where warm air is making its way through the attic floor, and it's getting to the underside of the roof. And when that roof sheathing gets warm, it's actually gonna melt the snow that's on top of that roof surface. And that melt water runs right down to the overhang where it refreezes. And as that process repeats, eventually the water has nowhere else to go but to back up and go up underneath the shingles, and that's where the water enters the building. And that's where you got not only nuisance, but you can have some catastrophic water damage. So hopefully, I'm gonna to get to this homeowner's house and help them out. Hi, Ross, how you doing? Dick, nice to meet you. Thank you for coming out. You wrote to us about ice dams. Uh, if you look up, you'll see the symptom. Oh yeah, there it is, okay. Uh, uh. It will not fall on your head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we understand that to fix this, we have to solve the cause. That's right. And we've yeah. been advised that we really should be looking a little higher at the insulation that's overhead. It usually starts in the attic. Let's go take a look. All right, sounds good. So the attic is over this way. And fortunately, you don't have to crawl through a closet, so. All right. Well, that makes it easy. The light right there, okay. All right, yeah, I can see the gable vent, the ridge vent. I can see the fiberglass insulation in the attic floor. And I can see you have an HVAC unit up here as well. All righty. So this all got started because we brought in two independent insulation contractors to give us an opinion of which way, of which way to do it. Sure. And one said to do the floor. Mm -hmm. And the other said to do the underside of the roof deck. And they both said, don't do the other way. <laughs> that is a common, you know, you know, complaint that we get, you know, conflicting information. And they're both partially right, because you can do what's called a vented attic or an unvented attic. Mm -hmm. So what you have here is a vented attic. Okay. Most older houses in this area have insulation and air sailing at the attic floor. The idea is to keep the heat in the building and then let the attic breathe or vent to the exterior. There's a bunch of different ways to vent, including soffit vents, ridge vents, and gable vents. The advantage is that there's less volume of the home that needs to be heated and cooled because the conditioned envelope is from the ceiling down. But one of the challenges, of course, with that type of system is that we have punched holes in our ceiling plane. So the HVC registers, recessed lights, plumbing vents, they all penetrate through. So there's a lot of places where air can leak from the conditioned space here on the main floor up into the attic space. Also, vented systems don't work great in cathedral ceilings when you don't have the actual attic space to work for you for venting. Um, and it's not great when you have an HVC unit or when you have storage in those spaces because you don't, you know, because it get really, really hot or really, really cold up there depending on the yep. season, it's actually the worst place for the HVC unit to be. The other way to do it is with a unvented roof system. Closing off all the vents and applying spray foam insulation to the rafters on either side of the roof line and gable walls. This puts a hat on the building, therefore putting the triangular attic space inside the conditioned envelope. So there are pros and cons to both roof systems. In your case, you have a vented attic, but because you have ice dams, it's clearly not working properly. Okay. So next we need to run some tests to see what the right system is for your house. Sounds like a great idea. All right. To check the home's air leakage, I'll start with the blower door test. The blower door test works by depressurizing the home by pulling the house under a negative pressure and sending the interior air outside. While the blower door test is running, I'll do some zonal pressure diagnostics with the manometer. The manometer will measure the pressure difference in between the attic space and the main floor. I'll also use a thermal imaging camera to visualize how much air is leaking through ceiling vents and light fixtures. Finally, I'll perform a smoke test. The idea is if the attic floor is well air sealed, smoke shouldn't be able to leak into the attic. All right, Dick, we finished our testing and we confirmed what we expected, which is that there's a lot of air leakage happening okay. between your main living space and your attic space, right? So air is making its way through registers and around lights and getting up there. 
and, All right. you, and you don't have soffit vents, where soffit vents are those, those vents that are typically in the eave that allow the air to flow up to the ridge vent along sure. the roof line. Sure. The other thing I noticed about your house is that you have gable vents on either end, and those gable vents are larger than what I would typically see in a house of this vintage. Okay. My assumption is that a previous contractor enlarged the gable vents on either end to try to promote better ventilation of the attic space because okay. you don't have soffit vents right. that lead to the ridge vents. Right. All right. Oh, okay. You, as you know, there's an HVC unit up there that's in the attic space, which is probably the worst place to have it in a vented attic approach. With all that being said, my recommendation would be to go with a unvented attic, meaning that we would spray foam the encapsulate the entire attic space. We get multiple benefits from that. One would be that we put the HVC unit within the conditioned envelope. Another benefit is that we have a space for storage that mm -hmm. would be somewhat climate controlled. Another advantage would be that we don't have to add soffit vents and we can seal up those gable vents. Okay, okay. Right. what do yeah. you think? I think that's the right choice. I, I have, I've had a feeling that that air handler ought to be inside of the in house envelope yep. for efficiency because of temperature change and all that. So I agree sure. with you. Okay. How all do right. we get stuff? All right, so I have an insulating contractor that I can call and see how fast they can get out of here. All right. That's great. All right, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, of course. In this climate, we typically use a closed cell spray foam. And the reason we use a closed cell spray foam is because it has a low vapor and air permeance rate, which means air has a really hard time getting through it and water vapor has a really hard time getting through it. So it keeps the heat and keeps the air inside the building. It doesn't allow it to get to the backside of the roof sheathing. That's vitally important in this climate. And it has to have a low VOC content. So meaning we don't okay. want to have any chemical off-gassing concerns like that. The other thing we need to keep in mind is spray foam is not really a DIY project. Okay. We need to make sure that we have a properly licensed and trained contractor who's been doing it a long time to make sure that they're going to do a quality job and do it safely. So a lot of people don't realize that you can actually run quality control checks on spray foam installations. Okay, so these are samples from your roof. Okay. Here's, here's one that you can hold on to. Okay, and the first thing that I'm looking for is a visual inspection. Um, what I'm looking for is a constant consistency of the spray foam and not voids or pockets like you would see in bread. Okay. Okay, the second thing is color. I wanna make sure it's uniform. And the other thing is smell, an odor test, right? Shouldn't smell like anything. Okay. okay. The next thing to go a step beyond that is a density test. A density test will confirm that the foam is packed tightly and has the correct R value. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to weigh it. 3.87 grams. And now I have this handy dandy skewer. Put the sample on the skewer and I push it into the graduated cylinder. And you can see it's going to go from 800 and it's going to rise as I submerge it. And you can see that it went up to 890. See okay, that right so there? you're measuring volume. Measuring volume, yep. So yep. mass divided by volume, that's the, that's the test that we are doing right here. Mm -hmm. So the difference right there is 90 milliliters. So if I do 3.87 divided by 90 times the constant of 62.4, this value is based on the conversion of grams per milliliter to pounds per cubic foot. I get 2.68 pounds per cubic foot, okay? okay. So that is a good thing. We wanted two pound per cubic foot density or okay. higher. Okay. So we are at 2.6. That exceeds the manufacturer standards. So this, uh, this is a great installation and uh, it meets the manufacturer spec. Fantastic. Awesome. All right, Dick, let me show you upstairs. Great. So everything is sealed up now. All the gable vents, ridge vents are all sealed. All the roof rafters are insulated. Shouldn't have any more ice dams. And you're also gonna save in your energy bills because now we put that hat on the building. Fantastic. Yeah, it's really great. What about the old insulation that's on the floor here? Yeah, so good question. So you can remove it or you can keep it. I would recommend removing it only because it's 15 years old. There could be animal droppings, et cetera. And this okay. is all part of the conditioned envelope. 
Okay. okay. I do have some homework items for you. So let's make sure that you are now running your ventilation system. So the bath fans, okay. kitchen fans, et cetera. Make sure you're running that because we want to get that moisture out of the house. Okay. Because you're nice and air sealed now, it's going to make the building perform better, but we're going to put more onus on the ventilation of the building. And we also got to stay out of the house for the next 12 to 24 hours okay. to let it fully ventilate okay, okay. before coming back. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Great. Thank you, Dick. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.